Okay, guys. Um, so we're going to take a look at a little broken set of traffic lights. Um, guys, if you look up at the board. So here we have a broken set of traffic lights, which means the red, the amber, and the green are all on at the same time. And we're going to just trace the rays from each of those um, through our converging lens here. So if we start off with our red one, we have a ray that is parallel to our principal axis. And from our definition, really, of principal focus and focal length, we know that any ray that is parallel to the principal axis, after it passes through the lens, goes through the principal focus. So that is one ray we know exactly what happens it after it passes through the lens. Okay, so we always draw that ray when it comes to lens diagrams. The other one we know what happens is a ray that passes straight through the center of the lens just continues on its path. Okay, it doesn't bend either way. And those two rays, we can always tell what happens. And now, once we've drawn those two, we can draw other rays. So, for instance, I can draw a ray that goes from that same point down to here. And what happens to all the other rays is they will meet at the same point that those first two rays meet. Okay, so this ray, I know, will go in such a manner that it meets where the other two rays met. If you notice, that point is not the principal focus. Okay, so the only time rays meet at the principal focus is if all the rays going into the lens are parallel to the principal axis, and they're not in this case, so all these rays meet somewhere entirely different. Okay, and once I've drawn the first two, I can then know where they meet, and I can draw as many more rays as I like. If I was doing this properly, I'd be putting arrows on all these rays, but we're going to draw lots of them, so I'm going to omit them um, just in this case. Okay. And you probably get the idea. I could draw another 10, but I'm not going to. I can do the same thing for the orange light, the amber light, because a ray that goes parallel to the principal axis, like so, we know that any ray that is parallel to the principal axis passes through the principal focus after passing through the lens, like so. Ray that goes straight through the center of the lens just passes straight through. Now you can see those orange rays meet at a different location than the red rays met. And I can draw more rays coming from the amber light um, because I now know that they will all meet where those first two rays met. Just do a few more. And this one meets where the others meet. And once again, I could draw lots and lots and lots. I'll just do one more for the amber one. And we end up with rays. More like something like that. Do the same for the green light. So remember, these are the two key ones we need to know. Ray that goes parallel to the principal axis. Once it passes through the lens, it passes through the principal focus marked on our principal axis, like so. Ray coming from that point that goes through the center of the lens. Well, like something like that. And once we've drawn those first two, we can draw all the others. So any ray then coming from that same point meets up with those other green rays at the same point on the diagram. Just do one more for the green. And what we end up with when we do this is loads and loads and loads of rays. And it looks actually really, really complicated. Okay, But what you should see is, if I put a piece of paper here, 
Okay. What we would get is all those rays would be hitting that piece of paper and it would just look like a mixture of red, amber and green. And that's true anywhere to the left of that lens. However, if I put a screen here, the same is true. If I put a screen here, the same is true. All those rays of all those colours are mixed together. However, if I put a screen here, what I would get is a little red dot of light here, a little amber dot of light here, and a little green dot of light there. Okay? The light that came from our object, the traffic lights, gets focused at that point. And if I put a piece of paper there, I would get an image of our object. Okay? If we look at what properties it would have, well, the red light's at the bottom, the green light's at the top, so it's inverted. It's upside down, not laterally inverted, like our properties in a mirror. Okay, mm. this is properly upside down. And um, it's also smaller. Those lights are closer together on the image than they are on the object. And we could put a screen there and the rays would go on to it. We could put a piece of paper there and you would see a traffic light on that piece of paper. That means that the image is real, which is different from our image in a mirror. Okay. Now that diagram kind of explains how that comes about. And if you notice, the image isn't formed at the principal focus, the focal point. It's formed somewhere else. However, that diagram is too complicated. We don't want you getting loads of colouring pencils out in the middle of an exam. So, what we do is we try and simplify things. And all we do is, doesn't matter what object we have, we, we just draw it as an arrow. Okay, so be it a traffic lights, a person, the Eiffel Tower, it doesn't matter. This is our object. Okay, and what we do is we just draw two rays from the very, very top of that object. We draw a ray that goes parallel to the principal axis because we know what happens it after it passes through the lens. Okay, it will pass through the principal focus and we put our arrows on that ray. Um, we then draw a ray that goes through from exactly the same point, the top of the object, a ray that goes through the very center of the lens, like so, and they're the only two rays we need. We don't need any more because we know where those two rays meet, that's where the image is formed. And what we do is we draw a line from the point that those two rays meet back up to our principal axis again. And that is our image. Okay, that's where our image is located. However, these rays came from the very tip of the head of the arrow. So therefore, where those rays meet is also the head of the arrow. And if you notice, that's down here. And that's our diagram finished. And from that, we can tell the rays meet. So it's a real image. That arrow for the image is smaller than the arrow of the object, so it's diminished or smaller. And also the head of the arrow is below the principal axis, so it is inverted. It's upside down as well. And that's the only two rays we need to draw to work out where our image is.